Hello there, folks. I just wanted to talk about these stupid little things that constantly pop up on stuff like Facebook, Reddit, other types of social media, and they always spark some sort of debate in the comments of or what is this thing worth and did we miss that little part of it and, and whatever. And I just wanted to say that these are objectively unsolvable in their form. I've never seen one that is actually unambiguously solvable or can be solved without making like five other assumptions that don't actually hold for the numbering systems that we know in the real world. Um, so they usually start off fairly unambiguous. Uh, the first couple of lines here, you've got three things that are all identical and they equal 15. So obviously the assumption that we're supposed to make here, uh, which is founded, is that 15 divided by three equals five. Therefore, each one of these figures is worth five. The unfounded part that they want you to come to is that because there are five leaves on each of the little branches, then each leaf must be worth one. And that is right off the bat unfounded on anything that exists in most of the rest of the world. Uh, there is really very few numbering systems that just count the number of things or the number of marks made or pictures made. It would be like saying this is a five because it has five line segments. Therefore, if we add another one, this is a six. And that doesn't make any sense. This is a seven. This would be an eight. This would be a nine. That doesn't actually hold true in any numbering system that we have. So why would it hold true here? But they want you to make that assumption later when they add an extra leaf to it. Uh, the other thing that for we know from other numbering systems is just adding an additional line to something not only uh, can modify it in some way, but it can modify it in a way that we might not have thought of. For instance, this is the Roman symbol for five. And if we add one to it, then you can get a six. But it depends actually where you added it. If how, like in this picture, we have added it at the beginning. So this new leaf is now at the top. What if we add in an additional line to this? It now makes this four, one before five instead of one after five. So does the positioning matter in this apparently tree and nature based numbering system? We don't know. We just have to make an assumption. And again, it's a completely unfounded one. The second part of this is pretty unambiguous. There's three caterpillars. There is, you know, equaling nine, that's fine. Here, we're not supposed to make the assumption that, I don't know, the lines on the caterpillar mean anything or the segments of them mean anything or anything like that. We're not, or maybe the number of feet that he's showing each foot is worth one or something. It doesn't matter in this particular one, it's just a three. Uh, the next one is where you get a very unambiguous thing, and it's, again, based on a lot of assumptions made. I think what they want you to conclude on this is that we need to get to 30. We know that the caterpillar is worth three, and we've added it to an apple. So the apples, then, must be worth nine. Getting nine, nine, nine is 27, and then plus the three would bring us to 30. But again, is that how other numbering systems work? That if we just take a known number, nine, and then we just add a three to it, does that make it 12? It makes it 39. So how do we know that in this digit system that it's just a straight up, we add two numbers together and that modifies them? Uh, we don't know that, so it's kind of a, a silly assumption. Is there another thing that would be just as intuitive as adding them that actually satisfies this equation? And in this case, it actually does. What if I say that the apple is a six instead and that the caterpillar is a three and they multiply each other? This is now 18 for this figure plus six plus six still gives us 30. So the caterpillar being added to it or the caterpillar being multiplied to it, both satisfy this equation very perfectly with whole numbers. So why would one be preferable to the other? To add another thing to it, when do we see a big number with a small number added to it? When there's exponents. So you could also potentially satisfy the equation not using whole numbers 
by treating this caterpillar as the exponent three or something and completely modify it from there. So again, we get into something completely unfounded. At the very end, they often want you to or argue about the order of operations on things. Uh, here, you've again get your unambiguous three times something that I think they want you to treat as a nine, which is yet another problem. I already have a nine in their numbering system. They want me to treat the apple as if it's a nine. So how can, in the same numbering system, both these things be a nine? It's a little bit contradictory that they match, and I've weirdly found that this is the case in a lot of these uh, little puzzles, that they have two things that at the end are worth the same amount, but they don't actually look similar. So we're clearly combining two different numbering systems here. And then we take away this thing at the end, which I think they intend to be worth 12, but it could be worth 18, it could be worth a whole bunch of other things. Uh, and they want you to kind of argue about the order of operations. So overall here, I just wanted to point out that these are not solvable unless we made a whole bunch of assumptions that this is worth one, and this is additive, and this is additive, and it doesn't actually matter which leaf the caterpillar's on, maybe that means something else. Maybe it really, again, if it was multiplicative, maybe this is one plus one plus three plus one plus one plus one. We don't know without making all kinds of guesses. So these are unsolvable. Stop arguing about them in stupid comment sections. When someone posts these, just say, not solvable with information given and or preferably say nothing at all. Uh, thanks for watching. That was just bothering me.